I've been working on a soundtrack for a sci-fi movie, albeit a sci-fi movie from Russia in the 1930s. Would you believe that Stalin uh, was so keen to create the next generation of cosmonauts that he very much uh, supported the then head of the Soviet Space Agency, who wrote a book for boys called Cosmic Voyage, and that this was about a young lad who actually ends up being in the first Soviet moonshot, goes up to the moon, and uh, saves the day, in effect. And it was to get boys interested in space, and ultimately then to train them up as the cosmonauts of the future. And this was made into a film. Um, it's quite late for a silent film, but it is a silent. It's 1932. And we don't know that Stalin ever actually got to see the result, because by the time this film was made, he was deep into his massacres of, of his own people. And uh, it's possible that they were too terrified to show it to him. But thanks to Glasnost, since Perestroika, a certain amount of materials come out of Moscow, which we didn't know anything about. And this is one of those films. And as you'll see here, because... They were virtually given a blank check, these filmmakers, to create a sci-fi movie. The model work in it is astonishing. Here we see our boy being shown the spaceship that's going to go to the moon. And it is this fantastic, huge model. And we move around it very, very slowly, as you can see. It reminds me a lot, actually, of the first time we see the Enterprise in Star Trek, the motion picture, in that you have this long move right the way around the ship, the sides and and behind and then back around and as you go you can see there are men riding little trucks around there's loads of people working on the ships there's people moving around all over the place all done by stop motion uh, a tremendously complex piece of work and this predates things to come it predates anything else but i mean the model work in it is just amazing and calls for quite a big sound so what i did was think, okay, Hans Zimmer, what would Hans Zimmer do? So I tried to make it as orchestral and electronic as possible. And you can hear here what I was after. times in the film I've tried to actually give it a different texture. Um, if you're thinking Russian, of course, you know, as far as I'm concerned anyway, you've got to have that sort of sound of the Red Army Choir. And so I've, right in the opening, in the opening moments, I've actually put a choir in there on this bit. Get to see future. 
Moroskin, Space City, Star City, Russia. certain amount of sci-fi sounding stuff. The problem is that it often sounds rubbish. Uh, if you were just to have a, a straight pad of electronics, it's, it can work, but it can also sound very, very unnatural. And that's why it's good to actually mix sounds. I've put some wind behind this. There's organ in there. wind is actually an electronic pad. And later on in the film, when we're actually on the moon and we're seeing the textures of the moon, the orchestral sound helps to ground us in the story that we're watching and helps to keep that sense of our emotional involvement with it. And then when you finally get to the sort of the big use of electronic sound, there, well the piece I've used it more than anything else is when we first see them in zero gravity because I wanted to give this sense of a disconnect between what they what they're what they're doing and what they're used to. So you do have this very, very electronic sound for when they're when they're actually in zero gravity in space. Let's just get through here and start to pick it up if at all possible. Uh, things like doors opening, I've put in the whooshes of doors opening. So this is a fairly electronic bit. It's, this isn't the zero gravity bit, this is the arrival on the moon. So the sound of the door opening is on the soundtrack as well. Come on, where is the zero gravity bit? That's when the rocket's taking off. Well, it's not too long after this. So it's here. So this is the first time they've experienced no gravity. Thank you. 
lots of kind of clashes and electronic pads in the background. Quite useful, really so useful. I couldn't create an entire score about something like that, although there are plenty of people who could, because I don't feel it gives us enough of the impetus of what sort of emotional feel of the music. Really. But it's very useful, and particularly when you combine it with the rest of the sounds that the orchestra can give you. certainly should be. There's plenty of new electronics coming out, there's plenty of new composers coming out who know how to score sci-fi. And our taste in sci-fi music will change from generation to generation. This happens to be my taste. But there'll be people out there with way wackier tastes than me who will do really fascinating things with it. But that's why I think silent movies are so great for a composer. On a blank sheet of paper. And basically, off you go.